Hello fellow gamers, Tonester back with another tank replay. Uh, welcome to 1.0. I don't know what you guys think of it, but uh, I'm really in enjoying it. Um, it's it's a, definitely a change. There's some changes to the maps, and we're going to point a few of those out. The ones that I've noticed, I've only played about uh, 25 games on the various maps. But uh, we're here on Redshire. I'm in a Type 64 bottom tier along with my brother, Combat Ineffective, he's in his uh, Jackson, which uh, I three marked. I really like the Jackson. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and get started. Basically, it's, it's standard light tank play, and we'll talk a little bit about it as we go. There's a spot just, just past the bridge, basically, in F6 that um, I have never perfected. I've seen a lot of people. YouTubers have great games there, and that's why I go there. But you're going to see I struggle a little bit with that area. Um, but I do uh, get some damage. And, of course, I'm not a Unicum, so the first thing I do is drive into the bridge. <laughs> but uh, it's in these bushes, and some of these, these bushes here have been added because uh, I don't recall all of this bush cover here. But anyway, this, this spot is intended to uh, give you spots over on the heavies that come over but in fact it also gives you spots on this middle hill here at uh, four line basically and you're gonna see that um, so all we're doing is just basically sitting in a bush camping bush because we're bottom tier the best thing we can do is uh, get a little bit of spotting damage for our team now I could have shot at that ISU 152 but I would have got lit there's no point to getting lit at this early in the game for me. Um, that T28 HTC, I have no hope of pinning unless I get the bulbs on the side of his tank. So um, so here comes a Hellcat across the middle. One thing that I've noticed with 1.0, it seems to have attracted uh, a lot of people that haven't played for a long time or are just seem to be less skilled, and therefore we are... Uh, seeing some real bonehead moves, um, and that is part of my success in this game. This is an ace tanker. So, so uh, of course, you know, when you talk about the Type 64, it's got a good gun. It's, it's very good for its tier, let's put it that way. But when you're in a Tier 8 game, you have 580 health. That Hellcat could take me out uh, in, what, three shots? Uh, that SU-152 could take me out in one shot. So I get lit here, and I'm kind of struggling. As I say, I'm not Unicum. So, but it's it's odd to me that that Hellcat sat there out in the wide open, and he was not punished at all. So it goes both ways. It can be very frustrating to drive light tanks because people do not get punished when you've got them lit in an open field oftentimes. So there's the Hellcat. You know, I'm I'm under the bridge, so I figure I'll take a shot. I I knew it was low percentage, but and that I would get lit, but it's okay because I've got the bridge for, for hard cover, and also I'm deflated from all the tanks over on the four line. Nobody else can really hit me. So right now, I just want to pause this and point this out. This uh, one line here, we're really overmatched. We have a Dicker Max, an AT7. We do have an STRV S1, but he is, believe it or not, only in a position to hit this Type 59 if the Type 59 pokes. If you go down, there's two lanes here, and if you go down this other lane, I don't believe he has shots because this building's in the way. So he's not in a great position, and, and knowing things like that, um, helps you to be able to c communicate with your platoon mate and make sure he understands because once these guys pop out out here uh, this position this hill becomes uh, not a viable place to fight because they're gonna get side shots on you and the Jackson has 590 health and there's there's so much there he could just get annihilated so I tell him he better start thinking of moving so in this game, I'm try trying to uh, show a little bit more of my thought process than I do normally. And so we will be pausing the video quite a bit more often. I'm keeping an eye on heavy side because I'd like to see they should win heavy side. But we've got an Oho that's really be playing back 
pretty far, but of course we're we're losing the one line slowly. So we do have a mod one in the middle, and that mod one is a it's like god tier in this matchmaking. It's an amazing tank in this matchmaking. So he's going to go over and and go to the one line and defend it, which is fantastic. That's great because um, he could hold that type 62 and decker max all day long so so we did win uh the uh heavy side and so what i don't want is uh, let's pause it again if there's any tank destroyers up in here they can light these guys as they spill out from behind this hillside so and anybody that's up on this uh ridge is then gonna farm them so usually they're pretty beat up when they come out. So the last thing you want to do is have you win a flank and then they, you know, they really shouldn't push this, but they are. So because they are, I'm going to go light this ridge. So let's start the replay again. And you can see my brother and the Jackson is, is uh, moving out. So I went a little high on the ridge uh, and I do take a hit for it, but only one. And so now I'm just staying below the ridge and I'm not even watching because... I know just from playing the map so many times where that ridge is and where I need to be to be defilated from those guys. So at this point, I'm just lighting one guy up at a time, you know, trying to stay far enough back that uh, I don't get lit, or if I do, that I've got an escape route. So now that AC4 is, is gone, we can go ahead and push up into this bush here and see what we can see. So I pushed a little too far and I got lit. Um, fortunately, the SU-152 has a very long aim time and that is important to know. It also has uh, pretty bad uh, gun handling. So I know that unless he's aimed at me, I'm okay. So right here, okay, I, I would normally be lit, but because I kept this building between me and him, and I, now I'm pulling into a bush and I've got trees between him and me. I know that he will not light me. So I don't know what does light me. I, maybe it's him, but at any rate, um, I'm kind of put myself in a bad position here. And really, as soon as he fired, I should have pushed forward, but he was ignoring me and I thought he would continue to do so. So right here, I'm in trouble right okay because that guy's fired but he's got i don't know a 12 to 14 second reload and i've dilly dallied for half of that instead of charging him but but what you want to do is he's he's turning his tank to face up the hill so you're gonna see me s curve down and around him so that he does not have the ability to shoot me I mean, he's got a very short window to shoot me, so it's going to be a really big snapshot. So, um, anyway, let's continue the replay. So, I am able to get around him, and uh, this is the kind of thing that you need at the end of games to get mastery badges. You need to stay alive long enough that you can do farm damage, as I like to call it. And... Uh, that's just what we're doing here. Fortunately, their arty did not shoot at this SU-122 or, or 152. I, oh, that's an ISU-152, so he has 750 alpha. But anyway, um, we, we were able to farm him out. So I don't want to go around this ridge because I just was lit. And if you come up over the top, they're going to be aiming at you. And... I have 455 health. I make one mistake with that stirrer mill. He could possibly kill me in one shot. So I look and see he's faced away from me. And I auto lock on him. And uh, I know he's, again, it's tank knowledge of knowing that the guy is, has a really bad traverse. Okay. And so I'm able to just take him out for free. So we're up to 2,500 spotting and 1,800 damage, two kills. So a tier eight and a tier seven tank destroyer. So the only thing that's left is Artie, you know, and I'm just going around because I don't, 
I want to go further around to make it harder for him so he's got to turn his his tank more um, and I want to get an angle where I'm not very visible so from his perspective um, he's seeing uh, not very much of me when I'm up on that ridge basically so um, anyway that's the game let's go ahead and take a look at the post game stats and we'll be with you in a second okay here we are at uh, the end screen uh, the after action report we did end up with a mastery badge here um, we got a couple of medals here spotter bruiser and fire for effect uh, got an Orlix medal for destroying two or more uh, tank destroyers that are a higher tier and then also a scout medal and you know that you've done pretty well if you've got a scout medal especially your bottom tier um, it was a good map for it but still so we ended up top of the team we ended up with 2100 almost 2200 damage 1451 base xp uh, combat was actually in second place with 2200 damage so i feel like we we carried that game in tier sixes to do top damage and top xp on the team i feel like that we really carried that game uh, moving on um, the end results basically i shot 22 rounds i pen 20 um, and tw like i said 2519 spotting so that's 4,600 uh, total combined, and I didn't fire any premium rounds, so I ended up with a healthy 55,000 uh, credits. It would have been 84,000 with a premium account. So uh, that's uh, the replay, and I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and make sure to hit that like button.